Welcome to the More Than OK podcast, a wellbeing and family podcast about tips, strategies and stories on how to be more than OK. My name is Belinda Bray. I'm a mum, a wife, a teacher and someone who's always trying to be more than OK. I love learning about wellness and wellbeing and I love bringing what I learn into my life, my family and my classroom. So I hope what I have for you today is helpful and inspires you to be more than OK. Today, we are going to be talking about making family memories. We are welcoming back our guest from our first podcast, Michael Bray. So Michael Bray is my husband. Um, And last time he was here, we talked about working full time um, and how we manage it as a family. Family memories are really important to me. And it's something that I've always tried to do as a parent. So one of the best things we did to build family memories with our family was in 2014, we took a world trip. We did. Which was pretty amazing. So the trip started in the US. Uh, Michael qualified for the Boston Marathon. So we took a trip to the US. Uh, We were there for a month and then we did a month in the UK. And then we took a few weeks um, moving our way down through Europe before going home. Yeah, via train. Yeah, train. Great. Yeah. So this trip, we talk about it all the time as a family. And there's not a week that goes by where it doesn't come up in some sort of conversation. So what are the things that our kids talk about? Oh, everything from quirky waiters <laughs> to oh, yes. the chips in Rotterdam being the best in the world to a lot of just incidental things. They enjoyed the fact that they, they've they seen the big monuments of the world yeah. and that kind of thing. But more often than not, it's the... It's the subtle things, it's the quirky things, it's the funny things that yeah. they, they tend to remember. Yeah, and they've climbed the Eiffel Tower and they've slept in coal chutes in Florence. Like We've just had so many rich memories from that time. Yeah. And um, that's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. I'm not sure if we'll ever do a trip as epic, but we still have ways of making really good family memories that can be free or nearly free, um, and you do, we just have to be intentional about it. Yeah, and I think not everyone can obviously go on a world trip. We were very fortunate to do that. But it's more the learning that we took from it that those life memories are worth creating and discovering there's other ways that we can create them. Yeah. So one of the reasons I'm really passionate about building family memories is because it's really good for our kids' brains. Um, So in a sense of well-being, um, if you can build really positive memories for your children. You're actually building really good building blocks to make them really happy and well-adjusted adults. So there's so many studies out there that talk about this whole idea of having a really good, strong, um, positive memory bank to draw on as you go through adolescence. Kids with good positive uh, memories have a bigger hippocampus. Like There's all this stuff that's just, for me as a teacher and a mum and someone who loves psychology, just really made me realise this is actually really important. So what are some childhood memories you've got that you draw on? Yeah, a lot of mine revolve around holidays. My family never travelled far or adventurous, um, but we, we got away regularly together and often they're the things that we remember, the, the playing on the beach, the um, you know visiting the mountains, those kind of things, the, the change to daily routine, yeah. um, which was really great. And a funny thing, I don't know why. My family always had spaghetti for dinner on a Saturday night. It's something so simple, but <laughs> yeah. that's part of that, those happy memories I have of my childhood. Yeah. And um, I have lots of great memories of camping trips and visiting cousins and just lots of um, great things. And even as an adult, when my family gets together, we always talk about these funny things and yeah. memorable things that have happened. So I really want that for our kids too. Mm. So today we're going to look at five tips on how to build Um, happy memories for your family. So we'll just talk about them one at a time. This information came from our kids. So we we had a bit of a family meeting the other night. We had a focus group. (laughs) And we asked them um, about family memories and the importance of making family memories because I think that's something that our family, because we're so intentional intentional about it, um, we talk about it a lot. So here are the five things. We'll just talk about them one at a time. So something that I think actually I'm going to take credit for it. I think I introduced this little concept and it's actually just stuck. And at night when we have dinner and we have dinner together every night, pretty much. I don't think there's many nights when we don't. Um, But we always at some point someone will ask the question, 
what did you like doing today? Yeah. And so we just kind of go around the circle and talk about that. And I think it's it's actually been a really lovely thing for our little family. Yeah, and totally credit to you. That was your idea. I'll take and that one. I, th I think there's two winning things that come out of that. One, it's almost like a, a daily gratitude journal yeah. by asking them what, not how was your day, but what did you like doing today. We're encouraging our kids to find the positives things, even in um, what might otherwise be seemingly dull days. Yeah. But more than that, it's a way of sharing our lives with each other too. So every day, everyone gets an update on each other's life. So we're constantly, it helps reinforce that concept of doing the journey together, I think. Yeah. And I think our youngest child loves this. He often is the one who asks. And what's really nice is that if people come for dinner, he will just often ask them too. And it's, it's really cute to see yeah. adults kind of put on the spot going, oh, oh, I have to kind of think about what I like doing today. But I think it's a really nice skill also for kids to be able to ask questions about other people's lives and be interested to hear the answer. Mm. Okay, number two. Um, we do stuff together a lot. Um, I think in um, our roles, uh, when we get home, we kind of just, uh, we give a lot in our jobs. And when we get home, we want to hang out with our favourite people, which are, which is you and our kids. So... We actually do stuff together as a family quite a lot. Yeah, and I think, again, it's that concept of sharing life and it doesn't have to be big things. I think for a long time I was sucked into that train of thinking where I need to be taking my son to the footy every week or climbing mountains every week or whatever it might be. And they're fun to do occasionally, but it's not realistic. And I remember hearing someone speak once who said, we're so focused on quality time, we forget the importance of quantity time. Yeah. And so ever since that I heard that, I've been looking for ways that I can involve our children in the little things. So if I've got to pop down the shop uh, to get a loaf of bread, I say, who wants to come with me? Yeah. And it might only be five minutes, but it's created one-on-one -on -one time and often the conversations that come out of even those short snatches of time, whether we're putting the bins out, going to the shops, uh, fixing something at home, we're involving each other in that whole of life stuff. Yeah. And I think something that I've also learned through this whole COVID-19 thing is we've been told to stay at home and so we have. We've been very good at just isolating. Um, and what I've learnt is that our kids just actually just want to be near us. Like, you don't necessarily have to uh, be playing, you know, 24-7. Uh, you can actually... Kids actually just still love just sitting on the couch beside you reading or watching their show or... They just love to just be in the same space. And I think that's been... A really nice takeaway from this yeah. is that kids don't need that complicated, uh, elaborate plans. Sometimes just sitting in the sun, patting the dogs is actually a really special time. When you do it together. <laughs> when you do it together. Something we also do intentionally is we include our kids in planning adventures or even just planning our week or our weekend. We often have these times where we say, okay, what's happening today? Who needs what? And I think that actually um, gives kids a bit of ownership about what they do with their life and how our family runs. Yeah, and I think the important thing is our kids know that they don't make the decisions. This yeah. is not about our kids running the household no. by any means. But I think it's important they understand they have a voice and we value their opinion. And um, often, particularly with travel, when we get the chance to do it, we've discovered that planning a trip is almost as fun as having yeah. the trip. And we want our kids to be part of that as well. So they help us plan the menu for the week. They help us decide how we're going to structure the cleaning on a Saturday or whatever it might be. Yeah. So they're just little things, but they feel included and valued within the family because of that, I think. Yeah. And I think this is something we learnt on our big trip too. We, um, our youngest was five. And if we told him by the end of the trip, if we had told him we were going to another art gallery, he would just shut down and make it difficult. So we got to the point where we we had this realisation that if we explained to our kids that we were doing something fun for each member of the family, that actually made the whole day so much better. So if we went to the art gallery in the morning, we made sure we went and had a coffee because that's what you like to do. Uh, and But then we'd always go to a playground or we would always go to the shop that one of the kids really wanted to look at. So yeah. sharing out that decision making actually uh, enriches the experience for everybody, I think. 
Absolutely. <laughs> okay, number four is a great way to build family memories is to have some family rituals. So we've got a couple, don't we? So the first one, the biggest one that comes to mind at the moment because we're in birthday season in our family yeah. is if it's your birthday, you come to our bed in the morning and you open your presents in our room. It just seems to be this thing that just yeah. happened organically, but it's this lovely time where we have everyone sleepy in pajamas, but really excited because it's someone's birthday and get to give gifts. And it's just this really lovely little ritual that we yeah. have. What are some others? Um, well, it's funny before I mentioned that um, growing up, my family had spaghetti every Saturday yeah. night. Uh, we do pizza night. We do homemade pizzas on a Saturday night yeah. to the point now where we don't even talk about it. Just at about five o'clock, whoever's in the kitchen, usually one of the kids, will just start making pizza dough because they know that that's what happens. Yeah. And, um, and they enjoy that. They look forward to that. Yeah. So these are the things that really build memories. And our eldest, daughter, our eldest child is looking at, she's in year 10. So of course she's looking at university. So a lot of our conversations are would you make this for me when I came home from uni? And we kind of have these chats about what are our family, special family meals and, and things like that. So our kids really appreciate these little rituals and special things that we do. And these are daily rituals, but I think to having some longer term ones, I don't know when it started, but we've just decided on the first day of school holidays, oh, yeah. every holidays, we take a bike ride to Queen's Park via the bakery yeah. and it's just become a thing. My son and I climb Tabletop, which is a mountain, smallish mountain here in Toowoomba, um, every holidays and it's just a given and it's something that we look forward to. And last year in September I took the girls um, on a shopping trip to Brisbane to buy their summer wardrobe. So it wasn't, we didn't spend a whole lot of money but we planned that we would have a nice morning tea and we would do some shopping and we would have some lunch and we wouldn't come home until it was dark. We did it once and already the girls are talking about doing that this year and that being something that we do. And so the, it's, it's nice to capture these moments that the kids really love to do and to just keep running with it. That's yeah, good. Yeah, for sure. Okay, the next thing is, which you again, Michael's really good at this, it is making everyday moments special. <laughs> 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 or do stuff for free. I'm worried about this, where this might be going. Uh, yeah. No, so it's making special moments out of small things. Yeah. So um, our middle child, if we asked her to set the table for dinner, all of a sudden it's a special thing, don't you think? Oh, it could be <laughs> the simplest of dinners on a Tuesday night, but suddenly there will be candles and napkins and little bows tied around the glasses and cutlery laid out in special arrangement. It's just her thing. It is. Yeah. And it just kind of makes something that you do every day just that little bit more special and something that you can remember. Um, during this whole uh, COVID-19 thing, we have just discovered it, that we just were really intentional about not letting this global thing impact our kids too much. So we were really intentional about having some really great memories at home. So one of the things we did was we pulled out the fire pit out of the garden <laughs> to clean it up a bit, and we had s'mores nights. So we set up outside under the stars, we had a fire pit, um, and it didn't really take that much effort by the time you just buy a few biscuits, a few marshmallows, some chocolate, and it was just, it was so nice the first time we did it. We ended up doing it three or four times over the six weeks or however long it was that we were all at home. And I think that just those simple little things, um, if you grab hold of them, they can really make some really powerful positive memories for our kids. And it's funny how something as small as that has an ongoing effect. <laughs> um, every time our children eat a biscuit now, we have to have a philosophical discussion about whether that would work oh, yes. with a, small, a s'more or not. <laughs> so it's yes. just fun. <laughs> it's great. Okay, well, thank you for coming in again. Absolute pleasure. Always happy to chat to you. So some things you might be able to take away from this podcast. Do you have family rituals? Are there things that you do with your family that just bring richness to your uh, family life? Secondly, are you overdue for an adventure? Talk to your kids, plan something and do it. Uh, it doesn't need to cost a lot of money, and, but it can really build those really good family rich memories. So I want to challenge you to take one thing away from what we've talked about today. Is there something you can implement this week? 
We look forward to sharing more stories and advice and tips on how to be more than okay. And we look forward to seeing you in future podcasts. Mm -hmm.